Pizza Flix presents Classic Movie Monday. Today, it's a cautionary tale from Roadshow Exploitation producer J.D. Kendis. It stars 1938's Tournament of Roses Queen, Cheryl Walker, and promised a lesson for every girl and a warning for every parent. From your mother. Oh, oh, thank you, Mrs. Dixon. Uh, I believe today's payday for you girls. We get what is humorously called pay, if that's what you mean. Oh, I don't want you for a minute to think that I'm asking for my rent. If everybody else in the house is a good pay as you girls, I'd have nothing to complain about. But my bills are adding up on me faster than I can get money in. And I intended to buy a new aeroplane today. But if you need the rent, Mrs. Dixon, please. That's very kind of you, Miss Adams. <laughs> Goodbye, Goodbye, Mrs. Mrs. Dixon. Okay at home? Well, it's feeling a little better lately. That's all that matters. I never saw anyone so. Gee, your mother must be a peach. She is. There's not another quite like her. If only she were well. Poor thing. She had so much pain and so little happiness. Maybe I shouldn't have left home, but she needed the money more than she needed me. But Aunt Lucy looks over her like an angel. She's so cheerful and hopeful. Have you told her what you're doing yet? No, she thinks I'm modeling, I suppose. I don't see why you're the truth. You're not ashamed of it, are you? Oh, of course not, only... Well, now they are in a small town. I just don't want Mother to be embarrassed. Say, we're going to be embarrassed if we're late for work. Let's get dressed. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> what became of last night? I wouldn't know. Do you wish something? Silly, pull her up. But I don't know what. No, I don't want any. Oh, I don't. Could I? I. Oh, 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 what's playing in here? This. That. Oh, food. Yeah, I tell you. You said there was some. What is it? I came here for? I'll have a nice double order of triple strength sarsaparilla tea. I'm sorry, but we don't serve intoxicating liquors. 
Oh, that's too bad. Uh, well, uh, serving someone that isn't intoxicating. What would you suggest? Suggest? Yes. All right. I, I'll tell you what we'll do. What you say? One, two, pick up sticks. Three, four, pick that hen. Like there. That's what I want. And make it well done. How about some coffee? Coffee? We don't serve coffee here. What kind of the coffee keeps people... B.B., what are you talking about? Barry, you call me Bob or I'll sick one of our cows on you. No more than I expect from a bully like you. <laughs> That's so silly. What's silly? Well, don't you get that I'd sick one of our cows on you and you call me a bully? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring you coffee. <laughs> hey, Rita, half cream. Coffee, half and half. Make it half vinegar, Charlie. Why don't you ask that guy to take his half and half business across the street? His money's as good as anybody's, isn't it? Sure, but there's not enough of it. Well, anyway, he's awfully nice. Oh, it's just as easy to be interested in a man with money, someone who can do something for you. Hey, uh, talking about guys with dough, how about you stepping out with me tomorrow night? Got a squat party lined up, and you need an extra girl. No, thanks, Jojo. Hi, <laughs> Hess. My friends ain't good enough for her, huh? That's not it, Jojo. She's just showing good sense. You notice I didn't invite you. Thanks. So much. Order, cheese sandwich. Ah, that's swell. But not half as swell as you are. You shouldn't keep saying things like that. Well, if you're beautiful, it isn't liable to say so, is it? No, but... It... I do. Say, you're working the split shift today, aren't you? Then how about my peculiar? Oh, come on. Give me a break. This afternoon, Bob, I've got to look for another job. I'm not making enough here to support Mother and myself. Why don't you forget that modeling business? Now, Bob, we've gone all over that before. Okay, if you must. What about tonight, if you're not busy? But you're wrong. I don't have a report until early morning. Come on, what do you say? I couldn't refuse when it came out so beautifully, could I? I'll be here at 11 with bells on. Order. Hamburger on a bun, hold the dressing and draw one. One on, hold everything. Well, yeah, put two on hamburger and the fourth of Santa Anita. The hunch. That fugitive from a glue factory. <laughs> Say, there's no hot sip, is it, Jojo? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Two cokes, no ice. Shoot two, hold the hail. <laughs> Who do they think we are, anyway? The guy gives you a dime chip and then he wants to squeeze it out of you. Huh. Well, I had a good morning. Dollar, 50, 60, 70, 80. Ninety. Huh. Two twenty I made in tips. Gee, that's wonderful. I didn't make even half that much. Well, you gotta have a system, kid. You know the trouble with you is you make them think they're doing you favors coming in here. That's the bunk. Make them feel obligated to you. That's the way to get the tips. What do you care? I hate to admit it, Rita, but Jojo's right. I bet that milk and cream chauffeur didn't leave a cent for you and you wasted twenty minutes on him. Don't pay, I'm telling you. Maybe Bob didn't tip me. Why should he? Well, you either got to get the tips for stall. You ought to know, Jojo. What was that last crack? You heard me. You do that once more now. What? What is it? I reach for number eight. Okay. For me? Yep, that's what the guy said. Look, Sally. Wow, how nice. You've been holding out on me. Oh, they're lovely. I don't even know the man. Well, maybe you should. He's a perfect gentleman and rolling in money. And nothing else matters. Well, why would he send me flowers? I'll give you three guesses. Well, it all seems so silly. Now, listen, Rita. He's got acute indigestion from eating in here just to see you. And here you stand floundering around. He probably wants to show you a good time, and there's certainly no harm in that. Jack Thorndike. Let me see that card. Hmm. Number eight. It should have been number three, meaning me. Those flowers are for me. Jack's a friend of mine. This is a mistake. Yeah, your mistake. That's what you think of every fellow that comes in this place. Oh, you're crazy, and I'm going to find out about this. Maybe she's right, Sally. Here, Jojo, you can have What it. do you mean, maybe she's right? She's all wrong. 
Oh, Miss Double Cross in person. There's you. Give me those flowers. Oh, you let go. They belong to me. Give they don't them. belong to her. What are you trying Give to do? Give them to me. Oh, Sally, let her have them. Oh, wow. I will. Next time, Smarty, keep your hands out of other people's flower gardens. Come on, honey, get dressed. The air's getting pretty bad around here. Sweet of you, Bob. I'm glad. Honestly. Then I'm not just another customer? If you were, I wouldn't be out here with you tonight. Jim, you know, the more I think of it, the more I wish you weren't working in that place. For instance, if you if you gave that up and, and modeling, why... Looks like I'm going to have to. Didn't you get that job today? No. I suppose I'm doomed to dish out sandwiches and coffee the rest of my life. Not if I have anything to say about it. Why, Bob? Look, I make $35 every week, and I have hopes of being promoted one of these days. Of course you will. I'm sure of it. Now, I've got it all figured out. On my salary, we could buy a home and... We? Well, yes, you and I. What did you think I was talking about? After we're married and get things all fixed up... I like... couldn't. It's... Well, it's not that I don't care for you a great deal. Well, that's all that matters. If it were, it might be different. But, Bob, I have an invalid mother I have to support. Well, we could still take care of her. Could I? Oh, gosh, honey. You're being mighty stubborn. Perhaps. That's the way I see things. If you care to, I'd let you kiss me. What? Would I? Bob, you're milk route. Oh, hang the route. This one is getting to be a swell evening. I wish it never had to end. Well, at least. I don't get it. You will. I'm going to show you something very few people ever have a chance to see. Hollywood from a milk truck. Gee, this is fun. If you don't watch out, I'll take your job. Try and get it. <laughs> to Mrs. Barnes. It's that bungalow right over there. Uh, you think I'll wake her up and try and sell her a bottle of milk, too? Oh, no, thank you. She owes me a dollar and forty-nine cents for two months. Breaks my heart to give her the cream, but I can't refuse it. A baby? No, a cat. Don't forget to bring the empty bottle. He's telling me. You're so good, I'm going to crown. Say, cow. Okay, beautiful. Well, I can... Dead on my feet. What do you expect? Throwing away your beauty sleep riding around on a milk wagon. But I like milk wagons. Oh, foolish. Well, you could be riding around in limousines. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. I hear Jack Thorndike was in yesterday asking for you, that's all. I'm darn glad I missed him. Now, look here, Rita. I'm your friend. You came to this man's town to get a break. Now, Jack's a big shot, knows a lot of people. He can show you around, do things for you. Gee, I wish he'd pick on me. Can you get a break and stop mooning over a milkman? It doesn't make sense. Oh, Sally, life is so complicated. Not complicated, honey. Just curdled by sour milk. Number eight. Number eight. 
Gee, I hope that's Bob. Oh, don't be foolish. That's Jack Thorndyke. I told him this would be the best time to catch you. I'll fix this right now. Trying to frame something, are you? You'll be framed in a casket if you don't watch out. Rita, go and see him. He won't bite you. I wish you'd let me run my own life. If I thought you knew how, I would. Go on. You know something? You'd be a nice girl if you'd mind your own business. This is my business. And any time you think it isn't, just let me know. Party, sir? I came by twice yesterday looking for you, Rita. Too bad my afternoon off. Do you wish to order? Of course. Let's see. How about ordering uh, a table at the Club Tropical for two for me? I mean, food or something to drink? Yeah, yeah sure. They've got the best in town. What do you say? Uh, please, we're getting busy. Can I get you something? Okay. Make it a strawberry malt. Strawberry malt. How'd you make out? Yeah, sure, go on ahead. Ruin his evening for him. Deserves it. Oh, swell. You've always had a hankering to go there. Now's your chance. But what'll I tell Bob? Oh, leave that to me. I'll fix that. Oh, sorry, I... Now, don't be foolish. Tell him you'll go. What would I wear? Oh, wear the black and white dress and I'll lend you my coat. You'll be a knockout. I wonder. Should I? Sure. Do I look all right? You look like a million dollars. And I'm glad to see you show you some good sense for a change. I guess it will hurt just this once. Oh, of course not. Now, don't you go worrying about that. Uh, yes, sir? <laughs> it's Jack. Now, come on, honey. Good time. And don't worry about me. Oh, thanks, Sally. Having fun? No, sir. Good. I like to see people have fun. Another dance? Oh, please, no. I, I practically danced my shoes off already. <laughs> yep, I'm right. You're the most gorgeous girl here. Pure flattery. No, no, nothing of the kind. The others look like weeds in a garden of punk or two. You mean I'm a sunflower from the Middle West? <laughs> <laughs> Champagne? Why, well, I've never tasted it. Well, it's good. Now, try a sip. Sweet and nice at the same time. <laughs> to you, to our new friendship. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Do you mind? No, not at all. How does it come that a lovely girl like you has to uh, hop cars for a living? That's just it. It is a living. Yeah, but I don't see. Oh, it's the same old short, short story. Ambitious girl goes west to seek fame and fortune and doesn't find either. And being desperately in need of money, I have to take what I can find. Oh, if it's only financial aid you need, I could... Uh... No, thanks. Well, have it your own way. But uh, tell me, surely there must be something else you can do besides uh, hot cars. Certainly there is. No one seems to believe I'm a model. A model? Well, Rita, this must be your lucky night. Well, Stuart Bannerman's one of my best friends. You mean the Stuart Bannerman? Why, he's marvelous. Yeah, he's tremendous. He's tops in his profession. Covers on the best magazines. Why, with your lovely figure, he sure could use you. That's a compliment, of course. I didn't mean that kind of model. I meant a mannequin, a fashion model from the watch, but it must be very late. Well, that reminds me. I have something here I want to give you. It's lovely, but I really couldn't accept it. Oh, and I yes, you can. I think we'd better go. Okay. Home, safe and sound. And tired. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> Thanks for a delightful evening. Not at all. Pleasure's been mine. Must you already? Oh, I'm dead. I've, I've got a hard day ahead of me. Well, you see, I'm not accustomed to all this excitement. Well, we'll have to remedy that. <laughs> I'll see you inside. Thanks again so much. Oh, you're lovely. I just can't quite see enough of you to last until our next meeting. I must go now. Aren't you being uh, rather stubborn? Good night. Rita! So this is why you had to come home early. Miss Sally told me you were sick. Why, Bob, we didn't have a date tonight. Didn't we? No, and I didn't leave word that I was sick. I suppose that makes everything all right. Everything, except that you have no right to come here spying on me. Who is this fellow? Who are you? Can't you see you're not wanted around here? Now run along and peddle your milk. I will, as soon as I make one more delivery. Stop it! You, Miss Wilson! I'm so sorry, Mrs. Dixon. I'm surprised at you. I will not permit things like this to go on in my house. I assure you it won't happen again. See that it don't. You'd better go now, and please don't come back here again. Don't worry. I won't bother you anymore. I'm terribly sorry, Jack. Does he mean anything to you? No, not a thing now. Then everything's all right. Now you run along and go to bed. I'll see you soon. Have a good time? It's for Mother. What now? She has to have an operation right away. That Lucy says it's an emergency. Oh, gee, that's tough, kid. I suppose that'll cost plenty. I have to have five hundred dollars. Five hundred? Why don't these doctors ask for a million? To be just as easy to get. I'm sorry, kid. What are you gonna do? I don't know what I can do. Miss Sunday, Miss Sunday, Mr. Sully, wake you up, please. What the devil do you want? Telephone, please. Well, tell him I'm not at home. Well, this young lady say her name is Miss Willison. What? Tell me that. <coughs> Good morning, or is it afternoon? I hate to bother you, Mr. Thorndyke, but something has come up since last night. Well, I'd call this a pleasant surprise. Who, me? Oh, I, I feel fine. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. Five mm hundred? -hmm. Why, certainly. I'll send it over to you right away. No, I want to earn it. I, I just thought maybe you could take me over to Stuart Bannerman's. Bannerman? Why, sure. You can depend on it. Today. Oh, no, not at all. I'm only too happy to do it. Pick you up in an hour, okay? <laughs> Good girl. Goodbye.
Jack, do you think Mr. Bannerman will like me? Honey, I'm sure he will. Good morning, girls. Now, everyone, please be quiet, because Bannerman is very nervous today. And remember, girls, this is just an interview. Whichever model I pick for my masterpiece, the spirit of youth will become famous. Yes, I, Stuart Bannerman, will make them famous. Billy, you've been here before. Take your clothes off, dear. You can leave your pearls on. Oh, now that, that's so much better. Vicky, please, please disrobe. Goodness, it isn't cold in here. Clothes, clothes, clothes. Ladies, please, I'm allergic to clothes. It's so much easier. That's it. Now relax. Lovely. Uh, Billy, uh, step up here, please. Now, try and strike a youthful pose. Oh, Billy, something has happened to you since the last time you were here. You're a thinner child. Possibly you're not getting the proper vitamins. Your ribs are showing. Now, Oh, no. That was the Venetian blind. Now, just relax. Oh, dear, oh, dear. No, Billy, I'm, I'm sorry. It's nothing like it, dear. Step down here. Oh, uh, Vicky, you step up here, dear. I'm sorry, child. Uh, would you step up here, dear? Don't slouch. Now, strike a youthful pose. No, dear, you look like you're getting ready to jump. Now, just lean a little bit forward. A little bit more. Just a little bit more. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, just, just hold that, just a minute. No, no. No, no, Vicky, I'm sorry. You won't do, dear. This girl must have a figure like Venus. The face of a Madonna. Oh, she must be taller than you. I'm sorry. Would you step down, please? Oh, Marjorie, come here, dear, please. Marjorie, would you step up here, dear? You seem to be all right for height. Let's see. Would you hold that there, dear? Right there. Five, five. Four, three, two. Nothing. You, you don't smile, dear. You give me no inspiration. Uh, your face is blank. No, I'm, I'm afraid you won't do, Marjorie. Would you step down, dear, please? Oh, Madeline. Oh, oh dear, stand up straight, please. Now take a deep breath. <gasps> Oh, no, models, models. Call yourself. Step down. Watch me. I'm afraid that won't do. Why? Oh, go home, all of you. None of you will do. Get dressed. Oh, what will they say of Bannerman? I can't paint without models. What will happen to my masterpiece? I'm so nervous, I... Oh, don't be upset. Bannerman's all right. He's a bit eccentric. Well, I asked you to bring me here. I suppose I should make the best of it. Hello, Jack. How are you? Hello, Stuart. How are you? Not so good. I'm having a lot of trouble finding a model for my new painting, The Spirit of Youth. But Bannerman, you found her. This is uh, Miss Rita Wilson. What makes you think I'm looking for her? Boy, she'd make a grand model for you. Take a look at her. She's beautiful. Got a figure like Venus. Jack? What's on your mind? Excuse us a minute. Certainly. Look, Stuart, I'd like to do something for this girl. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here. No, you got me wrong. This girl's different. Well, what do you want? She needs 500 in a hurry. I offered to her and she refused. <laughs> Smart girl. No, no, wait a minute. You use her. Give her 100 the first day and the rest the end of the week. You know, make it look like she's earning it. I'll take care of you. Now, you listen to me. Not for all the money you've got, Jack, would I paint something that I didn't want to paint. But if the girl appeals to me as a model, and you want to foot the bill, then that's immaterial to me. Swell. And believe me, I'm on the level this time. Well, I'll take a look at her. For Rita. Yes? 
Step in here, please. No, no, you stay here. You'll, uh, you'll find a costume in there. Get ready. Mr. Bannerman, is, is this it? Yes, get dressed. I'm ready. Shall I come out? Well, come out. Uh, just step over here, please. Uh, just drop that. You are. Now, uh, now, strike a pose. Beautiful. Now smile. That's just what I want. Don't move. That's it. Hold it. That's just what I want. That's lovely, Rita. Rita Wilson, aren't you? Well, I'm not quite positive myself. I've been too busy to find out. Well, you're telling me. I haven't had a date with you for weeks. Well, it's your own fault. You got me the job. Yeah, if I knew it was going to turn out this way, believe me, I wouldn't. I'll try to do better in the future. I really do appreciate all you've done for me, Jack. Fine. Then do me a favor, will you? I can hardly say no until you ask me. Well, if you do say no, Bannerman will have to pick up a dead model. <laughs> <laughs> now, joking aside, Rita, I'm throwing a party at my penthouse tonight. Most beautiful girl in America. Oh, do you know her? All right. Well, let's get serious. You're not going to turn me down this time. Well, hard. And I'll pick you up at nine. And that'll get us there just when things are really getting started. Swell. No <laughs> care. <laughs> Did you like it? Very much. Glad you came? What do you think? I think you're gorgeous. Hungry? Not in the least. Uh-oh. Empty again. Uh, not any more for me, Jack, please. Well, do you mind if I indulge in another? Not at all. I'll be right back. <laughs> Make it two. Hey, you. Let's get out of here and go up to Jack Thorndyke's. Jack Thorndyke, do you, do you know? Know who? Jack Thorndyke. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> Please. After all, I brought Miss Wilson up here for you to see and not for you to tear her to pieces. <laughs> well, uh, after all, you can't keep a girl as beautiful as Miss Wilson all to yourself, you know. Who said I can't? 
Well, okay, I'll uh, I'll resign, but not gracefully. <laughs> Thanks for a brief but very pleasant chat. Oh, it was a pleasure. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this is yours. What did I tell you? Well, here's looking to the face that's been haunting me from hundreds of magazine covers. And here's for me, really looking at you. <laughs> and just to make everything even, I'll say, here's to a certain young man who's been simply splendid to me. Me? You. And this calls for a real celebration coming from you. <laughs> Dance again? Just this once more. That's a very funny story. <laughs> Did I ever tell you you're really very gorgeous? Billy. You like me a little bit? Oh, a negligible amount. Stingy. <laughs> Just conservative. <laughs> <laughs> Why should he have all the fun anyway? <laughs> That'll be enough fun for one night. Just my luck. Good or bad? So bad that I'm going to need a lot of consolation. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> You'll do a little expert comes along. I'll be right back. <laughs> Jack? Yes? You've been neglecting me tonight. You seem to be doing rather nicely without me. <laughs> Dear old Jack, same technique. <laughs> no more for me, please. Rita, you've made me very happy coming here tonight. I don't know as if I have the right to say it or not, but I love you. You don't love me. But I do. No, it isn't love. For some strange reason, there's a little glamour about me at the moment. Tomorrow it'll be gone. You'll find other interests. Oh, but you're wrong. I love you more than anything else in the world. Rita, look. There wasn't anything glamorous about you when I met you at the drive-in stand. <laughs> that was just something to do. I knew the moment that I laid eyes on you that you were the only girl in the world that I'd asked to marry me. Why, well, that has all the earmarks of a proposal. It's meant to be, Rita. Jack, please. Rita, I'm asking you to be my wife. I'm all mixed up. I don't know what to say. Say that you will. Don't make me answer now. Wait till I've had a chance to think. Here, a toast to the future, to the future Mrs. Thorndike. Oh, I didn't say yes. Oh, but you will, I'm sure of that. Merely to the future, then. Oh, right, dear, whatever you say. <laughs> Boy, what is it, dear? Oh, I'm so busy. Rita, I love you. Thank <laughs> you. 
You know, baby, I love you. Yes, but will you love me when I'm old and gray? Well, why should a couple of years make any difference? Now, is that cute? I was only fooling. <laughs> Say, how about a little kiss, huh? No. Oh, there ain't nobody looking, huh? Just something. Well, cute, huh? maybe one. Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, boy, another one quick, huh? No. Oh, come on. No. Oh, please, one more. No. Where's Mr. Thorndyke? Mr. Thorndyke, he go play golf today. He left two hours ago. Oh. Get you some coffee? No, thank you, nothing. Tell Mr. Thorndyke I'll call him later. Yes, ma'am. Tell me, let me guess. You and Jack sat up to see the sunrise. I'm so ashamed of myself, Sally. I, I passed out. Huh. On how many? A couple, believe it or not. I do believe it. All you have to do is smell the label. Tell me about it. What happened? I asked you what happened. Sally, we're to be married. Married? Who? Jack asked me last night. Oh, Rita, I'm so happy for you. Well, why all the gloom? If I were in your shoes, I'd call this reason enough for a national holiday. I suppose I should be happy. Everything happened so suddenly, I, I don't know, I'm not sure. 
Well, I'm sure if I don't rush, I'll never get to work. Uh, when does a big event take place? That hasn't been decided yet. Well, when it does, I want to give the bride away. I'll do it cheaply. So long, honey. Sally. Yeah? Would you mind calling Mr. Bannerman? Tell him I don't feel all day, and I'll have some big excuse. Sure, I'll fix that. He won't be sore, though, will he? Oh, he's such a dear. I'm sure he won't. Okay, kid. Goodbye. You move. You move all over. I can't paint a jumping woman. Hold your pose for Bannerman, please. For weeks, you haven't been any good to me. Running to the telephone, coming in late. Sometimes you don't come in at all. That isn't cooperation. I'll try to do that. Oh, I know what's biting you. Jack, he's giving you the runaround like he does every other girl. Forget him. He isn't worth worrying about. I'm sorry. Boy, oh, you'd better sit down and rest. And remember what I told you. I'll be right back. Thorndyke's residence. Hello, is Mr. Thorndyke there? Who's calling, please? Miss Ritter? No, Missy, he play polo today. I don't know. You call again, maybe later. No, I, I won't bother him anymore. Mother. Mother. 
Where am I? You must be brave, dear. You've been a very sick girl. But you'll be soon better. Won't you tell me who you are? Or somebody we can notify? I told you I was Rita Jones. Go to sleep now. Doctor, the girl in 32 is better now. Pulse stronger. Temperature down to 99 and 4. Good. If there's any change, let me know. I will, Doctor. Miss Stransky, by the way, did you find out who she is? She insists her name is Jones. I see. This is the only thing we found in her effects that might be a clue to her identity. She's going to need a lot of care when she's discharged from here. I'd like to be able to locate someone who knows her. Poor kid. Miss Stransky, see if you can get this Mr. Thorndyke on long distance. Yes. Yes, this is Mr. Thorndyke. Who? Rita Jones. Why, why, no, I can't say I do. No, no, Doctor. Even for your description. Oh, that's too bad. What's wrong with her? Oh. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Thorndyke, to have troubled you. You see, she had a business card of yours, and I thought possibly you might have known something about her. Her relations. Or friends. Anyone's liable to have my business card, you know. I'm rather free with them. I'm sorry I can't help you out. Goodbye, Doctor. with Jack was off, and then all of a sudden you disappeared. And all you left me was a measly little note, and that didn't explain anything. Where have you been? The wandering girl returns. Am I welcome back, Sally? Of course, honey. I'm thrilled to pieces to see you again. The old place looks just the same. Oh, sure. Nothing ever changes for me. You know, I got tired of that yellow dress, and I hated the green one. So I thought I'd do something with this. You know the kind of seamstress I am. I sew on a thing for a week and get it the way I want, and then I chuck it in the rag bag. Huh. What do you think you are, the Statue of Liberty? Sit down and relax. Sally, I've got to tell you I'm broke. Who isn't? I haven't a job. I. The boss has got an ugly pan, but a soft heart. I'll fix that. What about Bannerman? Oh, I couldn't expect him to take me back. Well, okay then, the boss is stuck. I'll speak to him today. By the way, your old friend Bob Gray comes in almost every day to find out if you've come back yet. How is Bob? Oh, I can't figure it out. Still as hopelessly in love with you as ever. Dear old Bob, somehow I seem to always hurt the very people I love most. Even you, Sally. Oh, I'm so thoroughly ashamed of myself for the way I went away. <laughs> I thought at first you'd gone back to your mother until the letters kept coming that I had to send back. But it's all right with me, kid. I'm your pal. And whatever you've been doing will make no difference to me. Oh, thanks, Sally. I'll try to make it up to you some way. Now I've got to do something I'd, I'd rather take a beating than do. Can I help? Sure. A lot. Stick your chin out, kid. It's gonna hurt. From your Aunt Lucy. Mother! <laughs> the way your girlfriend walked out on him, I think the boss is a chump for taking him back. 
Well, as long as you only think it, it's okay. But don't let anyone hear you. And what do you do? You just try it and see. Well, here it goes. It's gonna feel grand back on the old job again. <laughs> Good luck, kid. Be outside. Poor kid, I feel sorry for her. Yeah, me too. She shows such bad judgment. Hmm, with the friend she keeps. Oh, if it wasn't for the law. Come here. I want to talk to you a minute. Rita. Hello, beautiful. Hello, handsome. Gosh, am I glad to see you. I've been in here almost every day. Pick me up at 11. So peaceful and quiet up here. I always feel that I can look clear across to the other side of the world. If I ever have a home of my own, I want it way up high like this. I'm sure glad to hear you say that. Because I bought one not very far from here. But it's not on a hill. You bought a house, Bob. Oh, there I go blurting it out when I wanted to surprise you. Oh, I'm so glad for your sake. What do you mean for my sake? It's for both of us. The company raised my pay to 50 and made me a foreman. Oh, I figure in 20 or 30 years I might be vice president or something. Then I got a loan and, and bought the house. Oh, it isn't very big, but it's kind of cute. You're not really serious. Well, I put $500 down on it. Well, it isn't new, but it'll do until... We haven't seen each other for so long So and... what? I told myself that you'd gone away on a long vacation, and as soon as you got back, everything would be just as it should be. But, Bob, there's something you've got to know. Yes, there is. The day of our marriage. Please listen to me. What are you trying to tell me? Just that we can't go on where we left off. It's too late. Look, I'm not asking where you've been or what you've done. Our life begins now, today. The past is gone. No, it just can't be that way. Shut up and put your arms around me. Do you hear? What are you waiting for, beautiful? Nothing, handsome. You shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry, but you're so lovely, I couldn't resist. <laughs> too bad you don't mean it. Well, too bad you won't believe how much I do. I wonder... You need it. Well, you've got me so dizzy when I walk down the street, I bump in the lamppost. <laughs> At least you make it sound good. But not quite convincing? Almost. Hey, that's a lot coming from you. But at least I'm making headway. <laughs> I almost forgot to give you this. For me? Now, who else would I be buying things for? Just a knick-knack I picked up the other day. Go ahead, open it. Guarantee it won't jump and bite you. Beautiful. It's from me to you. <laughs> from me to you. So sorry, interlock, please. Anything you want, sir? Yes, some cocktails, Chang. Yes, sir. Oh, Chang. Yes, Missy. Don't fix anything for me. No, Missy. That'll be all, Chang. Thank you, sir. I feel guilty. You've been so good to me, but I really must go. Why? Where? Well, I didn't intend to tell you, but Rita's back. Rita? She and Bob were married last night. Married? Well, that is news. They're going away tomorrow. They asked me if I to see their home. Home? Yes, uh, Bob bought it for her. I'm glad to see it. Well, I am too. I'll, I'll go with you. Oh, I don't think that would be the thing to do. You see, I haven't told them about us yet. Oh, it'll be perfectly all right, dear. Besides, I'd like to bring them a wedding present. Are you sure that's the reason? <laughs> of course. Partially that, and because I just can't imagine a long evening without you. <laughs> what a man. I don't know what I'll do with you. Well, come along if you must. I suppose it'll be all right. I'll be ready in a jiffy. Then we'll stop on the way and pick up the gift. All right. I feel before dinner. Dinner will be ready in just a moment. 
Good evening, Mrs. Gray. Good evening, Mr. Gray. You know, this is our wedding anniversary. Exactly 24 hours. And I'm so happy. I just hope I'm not dreaming. Well, I'm awfully glad, darling. Because every stick of furniture here has had your name on it for a long time. Oh, that's Sally. Let me go. Sally! Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Rita. Rita, darling. Sally. Oh, Bob, congratulations. Thanks, Sally. I bet you two are awfully happy with your new mortgage. <laughs> well, there's nothing like one to make you feel at home. <laughs> oh, Rita, I'm so excited. Well, lots you. of luck, Gray. Thanks, thanks, Jack. No hard feelings over that night, I hope. Not on my part. Oh, I uh, almost forgot. I brought you a little gift for your new home. Oh, oh gee, Jack, you shouldn't have done that. Oh. Uh, excuse me a minute. Sure. Aren't you thrilled, Rita? I'm just bursting with happiness for you. Well, I'm pretty excited myself. Uh, so our little Rita's married. Are you surprised? No, tickled pink. Oh, Rita! Look what Jack brought us. Oh, lovely. Oh, they're uh, imported from Egypt, uh, handmade. <laughs> I guess Jack thought we wouldn't be able to pay our light bill. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know the exact spot for them. I got a present today, too. Look. Why, it's beautiful. And all kids. What's the matter? Everything's okay, isn't it? <laughs> I hope so. Well, then that's all there is to it. Oh, Bob, uh, how about some drinks for the occasion? Coming right up. Make yourself at home, sir. Sure. Come on, what are you standing right, around for? <laughs> how do you like it, Jack? Oh, all kind of medium, Bob. Medium? All yeah. right. Here they come. Hey. Thanks, Bob. Hey, I, Jack. Yes, sir. Well, here's to the newlyweds. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'd like to add something to that. How about making this a double order? I'm about to ask Sally to marry me. Good. Oh, I dare you. If you do, I will. Ah, uh -uh, Sally, wait till you're asked. Go ahead, ask me. You're too gorgeous for words. Stop it, Sally. Well, Rita, don't be a little fool. Huh. I guess I can kiss my future husband if I want to. Yes, and you can ruin your life if you want. Don't say anything that might be used against you. See, what is all this? Sally, I've been hoping for a little happiness. But if I have to throw it all away to keep you from making the same mistake I made, I will. I'd be very careful what I said. Why should she? Bob, I wanted to tell you everything that night, but you wouldn't listen to me. Now you've got to. Jack was the man that... Why, you little fool, use your head. You lay a hand on her again and... Jack! No. Give me the police. Well, come over to 1456 Brighton Avenue right away. Quickly. You better call the coroner. I gotta make a report on this. Let me see your driver's license. Darling. Gee, honey, I've got some bad news for you. I just spoke to the doctor. Bob, what's the matter? Well, he said I'm gonna be in here for a long time. 
<laughs> Until tomorrow. <laughs> Gee, honey, that's a long time to wait for a honeymoon. Yeah.